go again, Boyer. Wake up. Move your over. Hey, stop making out with Blackie. We love those two. Not nearly as much as they love each other. <laughs> okay. Having seen an after dinner speech, you kind of get the idea. It's a speech. You can see it's got an intro, and she sort of previews what she's going to talk about, the semantic, and how it entered into the into the popular culture, and then her own ideas about it, which is not really a problem cause solution, which I think is one of the cool things about this, but certainly a problem and kind of her solution. Um, you can so the, so there's definitely a serious point. It should make you think. I think a good after dinner speech leaves you thinking about stuff. But the humor is is there, and you know some people might be offended by that speech. Some people might be offended by particular jokes in that speech. Some people might be offended by particular jokes that you make. You have to be careful, uh, or at least be conscious. I mean, ultimately, it's your speech, and your coach won't, won't know until they read the ballot. <laughs> But you have to make decisions, because humor is a funny thing. You know, everybody shares the same sense of humor. Um, and, and taste is certainly just that. It's a matter of taste, and people can agree on or not agree on what is beyond the, the realm of good taste. Uh, this way. If you have questions, I would love questions because I hate to talk about questions. Um, but if you just look at the event description, which is right up top, it's an original humorous speech by the student designed to exhibit sound speech composition. Right, that's the speech part. Uh, thematic coherence, direct communicative public speaking skills, so the, the delivery is important, and good taste. And as I was just saying, you have to decide where that line is and where what you want, where, how far you want to go, and, and not so much. Did you have your hand up yeah. with the What is your suggestion in terms of uh, length of speech without an audience? That's a great question. <laughs> Leave it to you, Jess. There is a 10 minute time limit, mm -hmm. right? And the problem with after dinner speaking, as much probably more than any other event, especially when you get into a big room with a lot of audience members, and if it's a really funny speech, you have to stop talking while they laugh. I don't know what the time was on that. There's it two minutes to some change. It was 10.50. This is 11. 11.53 I don't know what you're looking at, but 11.53, <laughs> so that's like two minutes over. Yeah. You have to be conscious of this. Bad judges, and uh, bad is not a good word, inexperienced judges, people who don't kind of think about it, will very often grade you down for being over time because it is sort of a rule, mm -hmm. as opposed to a taste issue. And so I think that what Jess is trying to get at with her question is, how much buffer room do I need to add in for laughter so that I don't go over time? And, and ideally, I would say, you know, I would have you right up there at 9.30 or something, and, and the judge should know that okay. any time after that, now I'm not done yet, but, mm -hmm. but any time after that was due to audience response. But that's risky because you run into judges who don't make that connection. Uh, at nationals, they actually tell the judging you know. panel yeah. to, you know, take into account audience response. Uh, but that doesn't always happen at, at regular tournaments and sometimes people don't get that. So even just the length of speeches, I tend to be much more open than other people. So I'm not, like some people say, it's got to be between nine and 10 minutes. Or it's going to be between eight and 10. Or, and that's probably a good idea, but I think some judges are more specific about them than others. The problem is, to, to, to try to give you a straight answer, that sometimes like in a preliminary round, it's just you and the judge. There is no audience other than that judge. And some judges won't give you a lot of laughter. They make a conscious decision not to. Others will fall out of their chairs. I don't know if I got a story for you. <laughs> but, okay, it was one of these chairs. <laughs> I'll come back to this chair story. But, um, so, the, if, you're, if you're making it eight minutes, you're not gonna have a lot of laughter filling that time, and some judges might say it's running short. 
and and then but then that same day you're getting the final rounds and all the people who have been eliminated from the competition at that point they all go to watch after dinner speaking it's a full room generally and they are there to laugh and they want to laugh and they want to support their teammates and their, their friends from the community and so there's lots of laughter that can add multiple minutes onto it um, and in out rounds people like extent jokes yeah and that's I, I wanted to make that point that I, I think that an after dinner speech, more than any other, is a fluid thing. It, it's changing. And I love when, when students add jokes in just for that round with that audience member. Like a lot of times people will, will, will goof on each other and make fun about, make fun of somebody else's speech. And, and that sort of stuff, that's done spontaneously. You're just adding that in at the moment. And you may have an idea going in that you're going to do it. but. And so an after dinner speech, I think more than any other public address event, is more likely to change from round to round, audience to audience. And sometimes you just, something happened in that previous speech right before you spoke, and you come back and make a joke. You couldn't have planned that. You didn't know that person was going to speak right before you. But in the moment, you do it. And so there's, there's some fluidity with how long your speech is going to be, because some jokes are going to be added in or, or taken out. For, you, know, you may have a judge that, you just know this person is like a really strict Christian or whatever, you know, um, some very religious, has a very small area of good taste. And you know that, well, that enema joke just isn't going to go over well. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she doesn't get the crazy stuff. And, and so you know you're going to drop that joke with that judge. So it's really going to be kind of fluid. But it's just, it's, it's something you have to be conscious of. You have to decide for yourself. Um, I think it's a good idea to have a little repertoire of stuff that may be in sometimes and not in other times. And then you can call it in the moment, depending on the size of your audience, because that's going to dictate. A, a larger audience is just going to take longer to laugh. And a judge may be me. And that's really hard to be prepared for that. When you get up to give your after dinner speech, and it's 8.30 in the morning, and you're like, and the judge ain't laughing. And, all your teammates that you've been doing this for have been laughing their asses off. Sorry, John. <laughs> and now you're not getting that laughter. Don't let that throw you. Keep going. Sell it like there is an audience there laughing with you every step of the way. Uh, don't just just be prepared because that's going to happen to you at some point. I mean, you get the finals. That will be an issue. I kind of answered your question. Yeah, right. I'm glad you asked it just because it's something that you need to be conscious of. Is, is figuring out time. Audience response. Um, audio visual uh, aids may or may not be used. EDS is one of those speeches where you can use lots of props and goofy stuff. Um, one of the sad things about forensics, and we do, we need to change this. Again, I was talking about this with my students last night over dinner because they couldn't believe that they can't use PowerPoint in their informatives. They still, we still use those that 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 easel that she has, that little tripod with photographs on it, nobody uses those anymore. Everybody uses PowerPoint. But forensics really hasn't caught up with that, and, and we need to change that. We need to make rooms, because more schools are having rooms like this, where you could come in and, and plug in your PowerPoint. Um, but if you have visual aids, they're probably going to be those old-fashioned, like, stuck on cardboard, you know, that black, uh, what do you call that stuff? Poster? Poster, yeah. Foam board. Foam board. Foam board. Foam board. And you have to cover, and you have to learn how to set up that easel. And it's so easy. If you've got a remote mouse and you're working with PowerPoint, you just hit the button and it clicks to the next slide. You actually have to work through. You have a cover board, pulling it off, putting it behind, showing it, and then anybody ever knocked over their VA stand? Emily? <laughs> anybody, <laughs> yes, who's ever, yes. everybody who's ever used one has probably knocked it over in a speech. Yep. And the, the whole thing just falls on the floor in a 